Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We are back again with God of War. Before I jump into the review, for those of you who are new to the channel, here at Slandered Gaming, we focus on RPGs, and my content ranges from fully voiced story clips to guides and, of course, reviews of games both new and old. I also live stream every Monday and Wednesday starting at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Currently, we are working through a Pillars of Eternity playthrough. If that kind of content interests you, be sure to subscribe. Circling back to God of War, I was was finally able to finish this game so let's jump into the review starting with what I liked. The story in this game is a wonderful ride. Kratos now has a son named Atreus and the mother recently perished. She previously made a request that our ashes be spread from the highest peak Kratos can reach. What follows is an adventure that takes you across a wide variety of locales, allowing you to meet many interesting characters and learn a great deal of lore about the world Kratos now inhabits. He is far away from the shores of Athens and now resides in a land firmly rooted in Norse mythology. Everywhere you turn, information is provided about the different realms you can visit, people you will be introduced to, and mysterious otherworldly figures that will not be seen until God of War Ragnarok. The world building that is accomplished in this game is second to none. Before you ever meet Odin, Thor, or Freya, you will feel like you know them very well. The story does a great job of setting up mysteries that pull you along and make you want to know what happens next. How did Atreus' mother die? Who was she? What abilities might Atreus develop with a father like Kratos? Why are some people trying to take Atreus? There's a dozen more questions on top of these that make you excited for each new development. I still agree with my initial impressions that the mysteries take too long to receive answers, but the payoffs in this game are fantastic. Another factor that keeps you locked into this game is the relationship between Kratos and Atreus. This is probably the biggest accomplishment that the developer Santa Monica Studios achieves in the game. There's just no other game with a better father-son dynamic. What I really love is that that dynamic changes as both people mature and grow. Throughout the adventure, their relationship takes steps forward and sometimes back as they try to figure each other out. It's masterful writing and makes both of them very endearing. When they finally reach the highest peak, it's a well-earned, truly emotional moment for them and the player. The combat in this game is absolutely fantastic. You start with an axe, shield, and the ability to fight barehanded. If you had just been limited to these options, it would already be an awesome experience. The Leviathan Axe is amazing to wield and a ton of fun to throw the entire game. Being able to pull out the shield at any time allows the player to think much more defensively, which is a requirement in this game. Somehow Santa Monica Studios have created a perfect balance where Kratos hits like a truck and feels insanely powerful, but at the same time, he is very vulnerable to his opponents, and if you don't play defensively, they will quickly carve you up. In addition, at some point, Kratos gets access to the weapon he is legendary for. This game handles that perfectly as a truly epic moment. Even more impressive, the Blades of Chaos are just as amazing as they've been in the entire series, but it doesn't diminish the usefulness of your Leviathan Axe. Both weapons serve their purpose, are equally fun, and you'll almost certainly switch back and forth between them based on the combat situation. You'll also want to utilize Atreus, who becomes more and more useful in combat as the game goes on. Over time, you'll get access to different types of arrows and powers that can be used against enemies, from stunning foes to distracting them, engaging in melee combat, or blanketing the field with his powers, Atreus absolutely becomes a warrior in his own right. Despite all of this and Kratos' abilities, I never got to the point where I was just sleepwalking through the game. There is a huge amount of enemy variety, and oftentimes different enemies require different tactics to be used. Later in the game, several different enemy types might be combined in one battle, forcing you to constantly switch up what you are doing and increasing the difficulty. All in all, 
Combat has absolutely stellar balancing and running through enemies is a blast. There is one aspect of the game I am neutral on. In God of War, to access most of the side quests, you have to turn completely away from the main quest. This allows you to explore large areas that sometimes have completely different locales and enemies. At first it feels fantastic because there's quite a bit of content and stories to uncover that are not related to your main mission. However, over time, the general area that you travel in changes, and this uncovers more quests, collectibles, and crafting materials for you to obtain. Also, over time, your abilities expand in a way that allows you to clear more things from the environment. This means while the first pass through side quest content feels fresh and exciting, your subsequent passes are essentially backtracking and quickly start to feel like a grind. You are still able to travel around the world after finishing the game, and there's quite a bit of post-game content to do, but the majority of it is basically busy work. I put this in the neutral section because I really appreciate that exploration is rewarded and the first wave of side content is a ton of fun, so I don't think it's fair to list it as a weakness of the game. Quick note before we get into what I didn't like about the game. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate you hitting the like button. This information tells me which content the channel is enjoying and helps my video spread to more people. I really appreciate all of the support. So the first thing I don't like about this game is that there is not really a strong villain. Most of you have probably seen Kratos' first fight against the stranger, and he's the closest thing this game has to a villain. That initial meeting is fantastic, and absolutely one of the strongest points in the game. The problem is that the game follows up on that via discussions with everybody except him. The game doesn't really do enough to develop his character or establish any sort of relationship between him and Kratos. While I did enjoy the story, I think it suffers due to that, especially considering how your final fight with the stranger ends. I think the arc would have been much better if you had more dialogue with him and were able to gain a greater understanding of his perspective. In that same vein, I think this game suffers from lackluster bosses. It probably doesn't feel that way if you are completely new to the series and just look at this as a standalone game. But if you compare the boss battles here to the legacy of the series, I think it's hard to argue that the previous games didn't have more epic and complex boss encounters. Poseidon, Hades, and Kronos were all legendary encounters from the last game, not even to mention Zeus. There are two boss battles in this game that live up to that legacy, along with one post-game boss. The rest are just okay. Also, the sub-boss battles get very repetitive. Trolls and ogres all have similar movesets, and for the most part, they all die the same way. I hope, considering the cast of characters we will face in the next game, that this will be significantly improved. My final issue with this game is that everything feels like a setup, as opposed to a complete experience. Some mysteries were answered, but honestly, most weren't, and a lot of new mysteries were set up for the sequel. You can make a game that is clearly setting up another game, while at the same time telling a complete story. Mass Effect felt complete, as did The Witcher and Dragon Age. This game honestly didn't feel complete to me. I suppose that serves the developer's purpose to make people even more excited for the next game, but it left me feeling a bit wanting at the end. That wraps up my thoughts regarding God of War. I had an absolutely fantastic time with the game and will definitely play the sequel when it releases for PC. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a like, share this content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.